All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna be modeling the stock for setup one and then modeling the jaws for setup two. Okay, so it's time to model our stock. You notice I do model the stock. I do impress upon you that that's pretty important. I know you could use the automatic stock generation tool inside the setup. Uh, but this is more reliable. You get a little bit more control over it. And if the model ever changes, you don't lose your work coordinate offset because it's relative to a model. Um, and while this will be semi-relative to our model, we will get an opportunity to break those relationships if the model changes a lot, right? Or reestablish different relationships. So this just gives us another level of control. And another thing uh, is I... Every job that I ever got in manufacturing, being able to 3D model helped me to add a lot of value to that company, made me very valuable to that company because it allowed me to make very sophisticated setups very quickly, increase, increasing the accuracy and complexity of the part, and also decreasing the amount of time it took to produce it. So being able to 3D model uh, is a huge leg up in manufacturing. Now, let's go ahead and see how we modeled this stock. The first thing we want to do is we'd want to select this and make a plane. And you can see I've already done that down here. Uh, added those radiuses. Now we've added this plane 20 thousandths up. The reason we did this is because if we started sketching on our part, we'd eventually have to move the stock up so we can face something off. Or it would steal the geometry from the top, making it kind of complicated and a lot of clicking to extrude that. <laughs> and so now we made a sketch. We wanted that sketch to be right in the center of our workpiece. So the cutter, as it goes around, is cutting an even load of material all the way around. And so you can see if we edit this, how we did that, that circle, of course, is uh, right in the middle of the part because the circle is, uh, the diameter is the width of that part. So I went ahead and made him horizontal. And then I drew a small line here and a small line here and I made both of those tiny little lines equal, so they're the same length. So no matter what I change this to, for instance, uh, this is the stock I bought, but it's gonna come in an eighth of an inch over, point plus .125, right? Now, when the stock gets bigger, it's all coming out of the center, and that makes it pretty nice. So when the stock does come in, I can add the value and adjust the stock to the proper size and keep it relative to the part. And then we just extruded it as a new component, right? Extruded it down, made it a component, and then we set the opacity to that block at 30%, so we recognize it as stock and we can see through it. Okay, so our operation one is done because we got our stock. The next thing we need to do is flip him over and make the soft jaws for the next operation. Um, so the way we do that is very similar to last time. We take a sketch off the bottom and we move it up until he comes past this radius to an amount that looks like he's going to be clean up real good. It looks like 3 16 He's going to grab quite a bit of that wall and he's going to jump over that radius because he can't grab that. So we say OK. That is the surface that we're going to start modeling our jaws on. So now we're going to select that. I'm going to draw a line from the center of this edge to the center of this edge. I'll make him horizontal. Uh, now that also, i uh, grab a point, and that also will allow us to find the very center of this line, which is right there. My jaws are going to go up. <clears throat> I think I want to move my jaws. I want them on an angle. Now let me explain why. Because that angle, I think he's around 20 degrees. So we do a line from here to here, right? And then we measure the angle from this to this. And what is it, 20 degrees? Well, that means my jaws need to be on a 10 degree angle. So instead of being 90, Right here, he needs to be 100. Um, so he's 10 degrees off. 
That's going to rotate my part and make drawing these jaws just a little more complicated, but it's going to make this even, right? And then I want to grab a set of lines and we're going to draw our jaws. One thing I am interested in is this needs to be perpendicular to that. This needs to be perpendicular to that. And then these need to be parallel, right? These are parallel. And then all these corners are also yeah, perpendicular. One end should suffice. Right. Now, that needs to find its place in the center of these jaws. What I could do is just say, you're going to you're going to be in the midpoint, right? Um, trim this and that. Right. Now, I know what size jaws I have. They're one inch by one inch, and they're six inch by six inch. So I made all of those equal. Because once I drop one dimension, everything changes, right? 1.0. And this, 6.0. So you might think that's kind of a lot of work, but when you notice that I can expand and contract just like I would in the vise, that's pretty slick. right? But what I'm seeing right now is these lines don't necessarily need to be even. Right. I would really like this jaw to be positioned right here. And so I can go ahead and add in that dimension. It needs to be about one inch. But this one, he needs to lose this relationship. He doesn't need to be equal to the other one. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of some jaw here. So then I'm going to pull him out uh, about right there. That allows me to capture all of that. But I want this number to be equal to maybe to 1.375. And so that's two and three eighths distance. Now we're going to say OK. And we want to go ahead and extrude these. Because I made a plane and he didn't rob any of that geometry, it makes it real easy to do that. My jaws are, of course, two inches. And of course, we want to make it a component. That way we can name him Setup Two Jaws. And one easy way to go ahead and cut those is to do a combined. You want to make sure you do a cut, keep tools. Your target body is the one getting cut. That's your jaw. And the tool body, what's doing the cutting, is your part. That's why you need to say, keep the tool, because that's your part. Right click, bring him up. Same thing here. Now, you can hide your body. Check out your bodies down here. This one you want to keep, because he's a jaw. That's a jaw. All of these down here, we can right click remove those, and then we can start deleting some of these radii that are just going to cause trouble. And then this part of the sketch here, we want to grab the offsets, him and him, move him down to here. Now, all of that's gone. The only thing we lack is a really good position to establish zero. That's going to be when we edit this, so we want to highlight or activate this component. Now we're going to make a sketch on here. I'm going to hit P on the keyboard and project these two lines. We're going to grab the center of this one and the center of this one. That sketch is going to be called zero Setup two. That's where we'll put our zero to machine the jaws, and our zero will remain there for the second operation when we machine the part. You definitely don't want to miss the next two videos. In the following video, we're going to be making a setup using all the jaws and parts that we made in this one, and then moving into developing the operations. In the next video after that, uh, we're going to be machining it. You might think that this part is shaped a little funny, but we actually designed it like that so that it can incorporate every 2D operation within CAM for Fusion 360. So by the time you're done with this three video series, you'll have a full working knowledge of CAM for Fusion and all the 2D operations.